and get your thoughts. So let's start off with Movement for Movement Monday. And so that was last Monday. And as we all know, we talk about this all the time that we recognize doing nothing is still doing something. However, sometimes people need a little bit of support and incentive and motivation to kind of get moving, whatever that means for you, whatever that means from your doctor for you. And we started this movement back in 2020, just before COVID shut the world down. So it was perfect timing for us to start thinking about how we were going to move our bodies. And the key here is that you follow your doctor's orders, whatever they've cleared you to do while you're recovering from surgery or, um, or whatever it may be, you might find it difficult to get into some kind of normal routine and just move, but you will quickly figure out what is going to be normal for you. According to Lauren Helicar from Medical News Today, in the article titled Sternum Healing After Open Heart Surgery, after surgery, the surgeon uses strong wire to, col uh, to basically hold the cut bones together, allowing new cells to grow. And over the course of months, the bones fuse back together. And I think that's things that people don't realize is that this isn't going to be healed in about four weeks. Now, I know, Molly, you can relate to this. So this is something that takes some time. Uh, you might be able to resume some normal activity, but it really can take upwards of better half of a year before everything is completely knitted together. So while you might want to resume your normal exercise routine, routine please note your body is going to be fatigued after open heart surgery, and you might need to take it a little bit easier on yourself. During the first three months after open heart surgery, it's safe to do easy chores around the house. Although I didn't do any of this. I took it and milked it. I wasn't washing a dish. I didn't do what it says here in full clothes. I wasn't pruning a flower. I don't know how anybody would have been able to get down on the ground and do that. But these are the simple tasks that you are able to do about three months afterwards. And social activities like going to the movies or going to the restaurants, it's also safe as long as it doesn't involve a lot of physical effort. So a person should basically be aiming to walk every day. Um, start with a short distance. Try to walk up little bit, little by little, adding a little bit more. Walking supports blood circulation and also helps to reduce the risk of pneumonia and constipation, says Helicar. And that's true. If you're worried about constipation, the more you walk and you move those intestines around in your body, the more things start to also move with help from Senecott from your stool softener after your surgery. But please discuss all of your physical activity and potential limitations with your doctor. We're always here to just share articles for informational purposes, never to replace your own personal medical information and recommendations. So I know that uh, in your home, Amy, there wasn't any open heart surgery, but there was still procedures that were done. Do you wanna talk a little bit about restrictions and how things were getting um, up and moving for your loved one that had surgery, that had the procedure? You're muted. It's okay. There we go. I got to unmute. I muted when I go was. Go ahead. So, yeah, so it was, you know, you, you kind of see things were all over the map when you looked online before your surgery. What can you do? What can't you do? And really on the caution, talking to the doctors, what can I do? With Pete being a drummer, his main thing was when can I drum again? So he, he actually videotaped himself drumming. And showed that to his cardiologist, he showed it to the surgeon, and he showed it to the discharge people when before we left to say, when can I do this? Um, it was amazing in the hospital how they start you working on getting back up. It's like, what do you mean? You just opened me up. You want me to do what? You want me to get out of my bed? You want me to walk? But very encouraging people at the hospitals, getting up, you know, doing some walks, making sure you could walk up the little fake staircase a few times before sending you home and then actually getting home set up with a comfortable chair so important in the recovery the easier it is to get in and out of that chair the easier it is on your body as it heals amazingly our dogs which was one of my big concerns are they going to you know jump on his chest and do anything it's like animals know mm -hmm. and they would sit next to pete's chair and they didn't want my jumping dogs our jumpy dogs did not jump on him once. And even the cat took it a little easy on him. But you don't know, you know, when can I walk? Okay, let's walk up across to the driveway across the street. Now let's walk up to the mailbox. Next day, we're walking a little bit farther up the street. And within a, a couple of weeks, actually making it to the end of the block and then around the block was a huge day. 
And Pete started his cardiac rehab pretty early in mm-hmm. the process. He was only home of a few weeks when they, they got him in for his evaluation for that. So within that first month, he started cardiac rehab, which was phenomenal for him. He could barely walk from the door of the hospital to the cardiac rehab center without taking a break the first few sessions. And then within a couple of weeks, of course, you're walking the entire way. But, you know, you'd, you'd think total rest would be great, but walking, easy walking. When can I lift my arms to wash my hair? Mm-hmm. When can I lift a gallon of milk? And, and Pete, he's so detail-oriented. I think he had notes on his calendar what day he could lift the dog food, what day he could lift a gallon of milk. But really, when you talk to your doctor, they're going to tell you exactly when and how you know, to do these different activities and encourage to err on the side of caution. Do, do a little bit less versus doing a little bit more because it's a huge, huge surgery to recover from. And if you push too hard, that might actually set you back more exactly. than if you take your time. Right. And it could actually set you back also emotionally because if you have this idea in your head that you can do something and then all of a sudden you think you feel like you can't, you have to realize that that can't may very well just be temporary. And I think also to what you were saying, there's is a known fact on how long it takes for the bones to knit back together. And it's different in the sternum because it's a, it's a part of your cage. You know, you need to be able to sit upright and have good posture, but you can't do that for the first 12 weeks. It's limited on when you can start stretching or reaching behind. But there's also a, a strain, I think, that happens from medication. Some people feel more fatigued and they have a different reaction from their medication. And it's not that you physically aren't capable because of the surgery, it might be that you're physically feeling limited because of the medication. So I think the point of all of this article really is to explain, really don't be so hard on yourself, but you need to over communicate with your physician. So Molly, what's your experience? You know, that was exactly what I experienced, what you described, uh, Pete. And it was, everything you've said is, is, is exactly what I experienced. I wasn't striving to go, you know, beat down on the drums or go do anything that I was doing before. I was wounded, you know, physically and emotionally, I was just wounded. So I wasn't really striving to break any records. Um, and I was limited. Like I was uh, breathless and weak and tired. And like you just said, Karen, I think the medic, the, all the new medication I was on was just bombarding me all at once. Um, I, uh, the, 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 the best advice, I mean, the doctors gave the advice, but your body also tells you what it can and can't do. It's not going to allow you to push it too far because you will just flat out fall out. Um, but the best advice was, uh, frequent short walks as opposed to one long walk and, or whatever in the beginning days and weeks. Um, I made that mistake of thinking I can do it and I did it. Um, I think I did three miles within the first week or so cumulatively over one day. And then I come down with AFib. So I think I hurt myself by pushing too hard on that one day and I reeled it back. The AFib got taken care of. Um, so since then I just kind of just did a little bit stairs were out of the question there. I, I would look at stairs and, and just, you know, have to stop and catch my breath. Um, and I did start my cardiac rehab exactly two months after my surgery. And it was the best thing I've ever done. And I'm actually continuing it to this day. And I am whatever, I'm almost two years out. So, um, cardiac rehab was a godsend for me. Hey, listen, for, I, I, I started the cardiac rehab, but prior to that, I went to physical therapy just to learn how to do diaphragmic breathing and just to have more confidence in myself. And then I did PT, uh, monitored PT for almost seven years. So because I would get really into it and then have a setback because something would go wonky with blood pressure or my an aneurysm would grow. And then I'd say, oh, I'm going to stop being, doing anything physical, which is so it, that makes sense, but it's contrary to what you should do because the heart needs to be exercised. You can't just live in this bubble of just breathing and that's it. Uh, So I've been doing it for a long time and I I like that in physical therapy or if you have a trainer, they will take your blood pressure 
before, during, and after. You might not be on a monitor, but at least they are monitoring you and reporting back to your physician. So that kind of makes me feel a little bit more confident. Yeah. So, but interesting. And, and so it's many still, people. Go ahead. Think, Sorry. So many people think that cardiac rehab is just walking on a treadmill. And Pete always says, no, 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 it is so much more. I mean, you'll see it in the support groups and the conversations. It's like, oh, you can do it at home, just walk on the treadmill. But it's not just, it's like Pete said, it's what gave him the confidence to maybe go a little harder or know when to pull back. And also the education piece and the camaraderie of being in a room with other people that are also, and, yeah. you know. And then you graduate, and I don't know about your place, but I got a certificate and I got some goodies. And I like the education. We had nutrition. There was a whole emotional mental health wellness component. And we would, you know, I would just walk and watch the video and listen to the presentation. So, you know, if you can get cardiac rehab, I do not understand insurance wise why they tend to say yes right away if your valve's involved. But if your valve's not involved, then it's a whole other process to sell yourself to get it. But if you can't, at least consider PT. But again, the stories that you're hearing here, there's, Everybody recovers differently, but the key is just be kind to yourself or like Molly said, it's going to hit you and it's going to force you to be kind to yourself one way or another. You have to be kind to yourself and go through this journey. All right, Movement Monday. Oh.